Good morning. If you want to see how we restored this vintage military style oak and steel desk, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Good morning and uh, welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 191. Uh, today we have a, a steel and oak uh, desk. Uh, the story behind it is a friend of mine uh, works at a, a, a recycling place and a lady brought this in and said it belonged to, to an old man who died finally at about 95 years old but she hated this you know she hated to get rid of it because the guy had kept it for years and years and years so it has some sentimental value and he said he thought of me which was kind of flattering so I took it and we're gonna to try to see if we can fix it so let's uh, knock off that chit chat and get to work the uh, the piece has steel sides on three uh, the side the back and the other side uh, with this oak frame supporting it and with a steel frame in the middle. The drawers the drawers are also steel. They got steel bottoms and this isn't uh, lightweight steel either. This is some pretty good uh, thickness of steel and got these oak drawer fronts that have been riveted on. I've already started to sand this one a little bit. The color that it was painted, uh, and it only has one coat of paint, is this OD uh, olive drab, which uh, leaves me to believe that maybe, maybe this was a military uh, desk. I think one of our technical challenges is going to be to uh, trying to restore this oak desktop. Uh, it's been soaked, looks like it's been soaked in oil. Over the years, uh, as the top failed, they went to extremes. They uh, put these blocks in here and then drove nails. Here you can see some of those nails coming through. They put this block in here and and tried to attach the top with the nails. So what that's done is our top has nails all in it and some of them are broken out. So what I need to do is take all these nails out As I take uh, the boards apart here, uh, checking them for nails and structural soundness, uh, then I'm running them through the uh, jointer. What I'm doing here is making up two 13-inch boards. Uh, they're going to be 13 inch w inches wide. The top is 26 inches wide. So I'll be able to run each one of these two boards through my thickness planer and get the surface uh, nice and smooth. And then I'll glue the two boards together. I got the glue up <clears throat> all uh, done and while it's drying I'm working on the second biggest problem. Here you can see um, we got this rusted out portion. Uh, I'm going to clean this out and kind of square it off a little bit and then I'm going to attach this piece of oak right in there like that.
this is right here this is epoxy with thickener in it using this thickener right here I got you zoomed in here so you can see the nails in these braces. These oak braces right here are nailed here at the bottom and I don't want to take those nails out. Well, let's go look at the other side. Here on the other side, uh, these, these braces are just flapping in the breeze. There's no connection between the tin and the brace. I'm going to take these clamps off and try to get some epoxy down underneath those boards and then reclamp them to the metal. And another thing, this uh, this brace here needs to come down and fill that gap. I measured them and, and it's high on this end. I got this uh, repair here. Now my plan is to take some of this thickened epoxy. I think I'll make it even thicker. Might have made it too thick. The goal is here, uh, that low density filler makes this stuff easier to sand and I will sand this down because this is going to be painted and with any luck this uh, this repair won't be noticeable and this is like a three ring surface uh, circus we got we got our top over here and this might be a takeaway remember we had those two 13 inch boards uh, that way we can run them through the uh, thickness planer, get them nice and smooth, and then stick the two together. And that way I only have one seam to, to, uh, to uh, fiddle with with the sander. Okay, let's let this dry up. Well, you just saw me uh, uh, rounding over the edges on these braces. Uh, the big failure on this table was the top uh, fell apart. And so I'm not taking any chances. I'm putting these tall girder-like braces across uh, in three places. And they will also uh, tend to line up the top when you put it on. I'll go ahead and uh, install these braces and then we'll go over and see if it works. I might have just putting them in with screws. I might have to adjust them one way or another. desktop if it was my uh, desk I wouldn't even uh, attach it but I'll I'll attach it up underneath with the uh, screws check the drawers out dark under here but 
here's our patch we just put in. I sanded it off. I'll paint over that and hardly be able to notice it. Okay, uh, bef before we put uh, finish on the wood and paint the uh, metal part, I'm going to have to sand the whole thing down. I'll uh, leave you. I'll put you on the time machine for that because it's too boring. And I'll just come back when there's something interesting happens. Fixing the rail, we install this little fence around the, uh, the desk. Uh, the original way it was attached was with these big old timey honking screws. And you can see what it did to the wood. It pretty much, you know, it killed the wood and it also split uh, these backs, you know, trying to hit that small target from underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pocket holes uh, in this little fence and attach it with pocket screws. I'm going to put uh, two pocket holes on the sides and three along the back. Another issue with those uh, big screws, they only had one big screw in the side. You come around here to the back, they only had one right in the center. And then they had one down here at the other end. Well, what that allowed was for, uh, for the, the whole business to twist and put torque on those uh, uh, dovetail joints down here at the bottom. This would be a much better setup. Then it has this little detail in the back. This piece of wood that's held out by a spacer. I don't know what it's for, but I think it looks pretty good. It's a nice little detail. Well, it looks like our desktop is see those those um, dovetail joints right there there won't be any torque on them because uh, because the pocket screws will keep that uh, joint from moving there's our little front detail and there's our refurbished top got most of the sanding done uh, what I need to do now is mask off the drawer fronts I've changed my mind about not taking these um, uh, drawer pulls off um, I think they're ugly and cheap and besides that I can't really get a good finish a good crisp finish around here so I'm gonna take these off and replace them with these new handles. Now how you get these rivets out is just take a drill in the back here and just drill out the flare. Then you just take a, a, a punch and knock out the, knock out the rivet. Then, of course, you just drill your new holes. Now, if you want to stop yourself from going crazy, just to invest a few bucks on some of these breakaway knob screws, uh, because then you can adjust the length of them to exactly the uh, length of your drawer front. Okay, the next step in the process is to mask off the drawer front uh, using this painter's tape. Now you can see uh, the next step is painting and you can see I've got it masked even around the edges here and around the edges here so all the wood will remain bare. In addition to uh, working on the drawers I went ahead and painted the carcass. I didn't show that because I didn't think there was any takeaways but I think there are, is a takeaway. Whenever you when you do a job like big job like this and you got you know you got various sides and you got to get it from all angles if you put it on a 
the best way is probably to hang it from the ceiling, but a second alternative is to put it on some kind of a bench that moves around so you can uh, get to everything. I got all the uh, painting done, got the drawers done, and got the carcass. Now it's time to concentrate on the stain we're going to use for the uh, top and drawer fronts. Two different uh, colors we're going to try out here. This one's, they're both uh, stain and polyurethane mixed together, but this one's pink, uh, pecan and it's a little bit lighter, a lot more brown. And this one is called Mission Oak and it's the darker of the two. I'm going to try them on the bottom of the, uh... well that's awful light isn't it? Really liking this, uh, this finish. It's giving it really an antique kind of almost uh, rustic look. And since this piece is, I would say, at least 70 or 80 years old, it's probably good. This finish is really working for me. Um, it's not too dark, not too light. I'm going to just uh, work on those drawers. I stain the uh, wood on the inside of the drawers and around the rim. I'm going to let that dry for a while. And while it's drying, let's uh, flip this thing over and see if we can get some finish on the top. like the look of that don't you okay let's go ahead and let this uh, dry up a little bit and we'll work on those drawers now I hope you get the same look on these drawer fronts but probably won't I put a little too much on and then wipe it off. Well, there we have it, our nice little restored uh, military style steel and oak desk. Uh, we had to rebuild the top, uh, but for the drawers, all we had to do is uh, fiddle with some hardware and and uh, clean them up a little bit and put some finish on them. And we fixed that uh, rusty place down there in the bottom. So I don't know, pretty fun uh, project. Anyway, it's uh, uh, my favorite kind of project for Memphis Monday, 191. Now well, there we have it for Memphis Monday, 191. Uh, restoring military style oak and steel desk. Uh, we rebuilt the top, it came out real nice, fixed a rusty place down there. I still haven't figured out what kind of desk it is. Uh, very unique. And when I tell you this, you're going to say, yep, that's unique. It's got two top drawers. Uh, I, I have never seen another dresser that had two top drawers. You know, usually they have one small one on there and then uh, maybe five, four drawers over here. Or they have one big one across there, but this has two uh, top drawers. So, very unique. 
I think it's uh, it was O.D. Green. I, I think it was uh, uh, an old-timey uh, either industrial desk or military desk of some type. But anyway, my favorite kind of project, uh, restoring stuff. So like and favorite and share and comment and all the stuff you do on the internet, most of all. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.